Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Raps Assistant on Air, the Rapeseed podcast here in the Baltics. My name is René Brandt, and today I have the honor to welcome my PM colleague Viginta here from the Rapul Baltics and our first guest, Anas from Agroconcernas. During the last weeks, we got quite a lot of unexpected positive feedback from all the different countries, from colleagues in uh, Rapul and also from other people outside in the agriculture business. And uh, before we will start with our podcast, we would like to use the moment to thank you for all this positive feedback. It is motivation for us to go further, to look for new interesting topics for you and your daily life with rapeseed. Today, we will speak about fungicides in rapeseed, a leftover from the past. To underline this uh, quite provocating title, please uh, let me add some further statements from the market. Since a few years, we have to observe that uh, rapeseed is not really showing a further yield progress in the practice. That's a problem. The investments from the farmers are not going directly into a higher profit. And uh, we have to observe additionally that uh, rapeseed has to struggle more and more with the challenging conditions Especially if we look to the establishment in the autumn time, we see it is now more and more complicated for the rapeseed to show an homogeneous field before Christmas. On top, we see an increasing political influence on our agriculture in general, but also especially for our rapeseed business. Uh, and we see that not only since we have the Green Deal uh, in, in the European Union, we have already observed this increasing political influence already before. The message is clear. Minus 50% in pesticides, that is a fact till 2030, that will also influence the usage of fungicides in rapeseed. On the other side, um, if we follow um, official investigations in the efficiency of, of fungicides in rapeseed, we see in uh, long-term analyses from different countries that more than 50% of the fungicide applications in autumn time are not profitable. What does it mean for us and uh, for rapeseed as one of the most intensive crops in the European crop rotation? We will discuss here today to give you uh, some further input for that. So I hope you, ladies and gentlemen, understand there are a lot of questions, a lot of open points which we would like to discuss. So we hope for an attractive discussion here today and yeah. Let's start. Of course, such a topic requires support. Uh, we looked for a well-known uh, um, well established market expert for pesticides and uh, we are happy, really happy that we could convince Arnas from Agro Concerners to, to come here today to us to participate here on our podcast and to go in in such a discussion with us. We will speak about uh, successful growth regulation. Uh, we will speak about uh, on, uh, the plus and, and minus of, of fungicides, about the position of fungicides at all. And of course, uh, we want to try to, to get uh, his personal uh, um, strategy for a successful establishment of rapeseed in autumn time. So, Arnas, thanks again for your participation um, here today. Um, be, before we will uh, uh, start with first questions, please let me introduce you a little bit to our international audience of Raps Assistant. 
Um, I have uh, looked a little bit uh, to, uh, uh, to the internet, what I can find about you, and uh, I was able to collect some, uh, some background information uh, via Facebook, luckily. So uh, I have uh, seen that um, you finished your study at uh, Agricultural Technologies and uh, their management on the Lithuanian uh, University of Agriculture in Kaunas in 2011. After that study, you uh, joined then Aku Concerners. Aku Concerners is uh, one of the biggest and, and main uh, dealers here in uh, Lithuania, but also on, in, in, in total on the Baltic market, uh, where you were already responsible for then for several positions uh, uh, in, in seed business as a seed manager, and, and now you are working there as a pesticide manager. Uh, me personally, um, I'm interested in how did you found your your interest for for agriculture, and 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 I'm curious where are the differences between the seed and pesticide business. Um, so, hello everyone, and uh, thank you thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I hope we will be able to prolong our discussions we had uh, just before uh, uh, the podcast. Uh, here right now. So what uh, happened in my life uh, after I was graduated? I decided to check up all the industries who are growing in my opinion and agriculture was one of them So I joined Lithuanian Agriculture University of Agriculture and studied there for six years and on 2011 I decided to join Agroconcerners. So uh, There is a great family of expertise people who has all kind of expertise there and they, they are growing really nice specialists around here and they are all well known. By the way, Viginta is also my former colleague. Uh, nice. We worked for a while, a uh, few years ago. So for six years, I was, I was responsible for all our seed business and uh, I developed uh, quite uh, a lot of changes in our company together with our team. One of these projects might be known, well known for Lithuanian farmers, it's Mercedes one of your great varieties of winter also drip and also right now it's already four years when I'm working on crop protection division and uh, here we also introduce quite nice and great products for Lithuanian farmers um, and I'm quite proud about the job we're doing all together. Okay, but uh, again, I have to. What is the main difference? Th what is the main difference? I'm interested. Uh, what is the main difference? I'd say, you know, that first of all, uh, crop protection section is more competitive because it's much easier to sell uh, the pesticides. Uh, why? Because you can, every single time you can use math and count how much of active you can buy in one, on, in one or another pricing and circumstances. And you know, it's, it's much easier to know every single new product who's coming to the market. You just, it's just coming, you're looking into the uh, what kind of compounds are inside and you already know what, what, how you can use it and uh, with, with some kind of basic knowledge. And here with varieties it's much more different and harder to do because sometimes you need very long time to check all, uh, all the ways uh, the same variety. For example, maybe this year it was great but uh, two years ago it could be really bad because we got some frost yeah and now uh, for some time we won't have any kind of cold temperatures even if uh, in the winter uh, and maybe it looks much better than it is for real so sometimes it's tricky especially it's tricky to work with uh, winter wheat varieties when uh, some kind of problems appears in some period of time for example quality of grain or sprouting or, or something like that. So it's much more trickier, but uh, together uh, seed business is uh, the one which is, in my opinion, it's the future. When we're linking everything together with what you told, we're reducing pesticides, we, are, we will use more technologies for precise farming, but one of the most important components all the time will be varieties. Yeah, that's that's true. 
Thank you, Anas. Um, uh, but now enough for um, um, introduction and, and so let's go a little bit deeper in our uh, topic today. Um, but be, before we will start here, we, we should have a look outside about uh, the situation in the fields. Um, and uh, here, uh, Beginter, I think you have the best uh, overview about uh, first emergence and, and uh, use development of rapeseed. I have heard that you were traveling quite a lot in the last days between the different uh, countries. So please share with us uh, your latest uh, impressions about the rapeseed in the field. And um, yeah, I could imagine that already the first early sown rapeseed fields uh, reach four or five leaves. Yes, you are right. So nice to meet you colleagues. And uh, I have an interesting conversation with you as uh, agricultural uh, professionals. Uh, this week, uh, really, I have a chance to visit uh, all Baltic states. Uh, so I want uh, to say that there are no big differences in these countries. And uh, uh, these uh, all three fields uh, look similar. So uh, we can find uh, that uh, uh, farmers uh, sown uh, in two positions. Uh, one is optimal time. It is about 40% of fields, uh, and uh, another is uh, later time. It is about 60% of the fields, and uh, uh, the following uh, situation occurs. Uh, so earlier uh, sown fields um, uh, due to lack of moisture uh, looks um, not uh, homogeneous, and uh, the plants are different. Uh, we can saw plants with, which have uh, four or five uh, leaves and another only two. And uh, later sowing crops um, uh, are more uniform. Uh, mostly about 70% uh, of the field is uh, covered and uh, the plants is about uh, two, three, three, four leaves. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks, Viginta, for a compact uh, um, overview. Uh, we both together already discussed in our last uh, podcast about uh, the satisfying rapeseed yields also here in the Baltics uh, in uh, Harvest 2020. And we give already a, a, a small, um, yeah, attractive outlook for, for the profitability of, of rapeseed also for, for Harvest 2021. Um, what do you think? Um, um, do our farmers intend uh, now to invest more in a probably higher um, intensity of, of rapeseed or do they start already to look for some alternative strategies? Um, uh, yes, winter Osset rape um, uh, still is the most profitable crop in our countries and um, uh, it requires uh, most proven and uh, the greatest economic benefit strategy. So uh, the choice of which depends uh, on many factors. Uh, farms uh, in our region uh, choose different strategies and, uh, and are, I are able to achieve many high results. Uh, so. Some farms have proven uh, and profitable intensive plant uh, care technology and uh, others uh, mm, uh, choose uh, sustainably one. And of course, uh, we have uh, really good uh, uh, fields and uh, main, mostly maybe there are one difference that a uh, little bit lower yield results. So I think that uh, regarding uh, plant regulation, um, I see changes in uh, the strategies of progressive thinking uh, farmers. Uh, we try to find alternatives uh, to the most common usual uh, using uh, strategies and uh, another farmers um, choosing uh, earlier time to regulate grow and uh, another products or maybe products uh, complexes that inhibit plant grow. Okay, 
Okay. Um, Anas, what's your opinion about that? Um, did you already observe uh, a change in, in, in the growth regulation in, in rapeseed here in, in the last up to five years? So I think uh, the trends are changing all the time. Uh, the main question is uh, when we drilled uh, the also drip, what kind of uh, uh, size it already reached in short period of time and uh, sometimes are we able to go to the field if it's not too windy or, or, or for example, it's not constantly raining like it was, for example, in 2017, autumn mm -hmm. 2017. Mm -hmm. So on autumn 2017, for example, there was no growth regulation required. It was mm -hmm. not enough moisture in the soil. Uh, it was too much moisture in the soil and not enough uh, oxygen. Mm -hmm. And uh, plants were not developing and, and uh, weeds as well. And uh, it was quite problematic for us to even go to the field with a sprayer because it waits and the soil was too, too wet. For example, in the last couple of years, we got another trend that farmers went to drill very early because they've been able to harvest extremely early. Um, this year, I think we are changing, we're coming back to uh, all the way we are working with uh, to a few years ago when we had, let's say, late harvest, uh, later drilling time. So now, uh, even now, uh, as Viginta mentioned, uh, there are different kinds of fields and they're, not of them uh, are homogeneous. And it's a bit harder to choose uh, uh, the pro right product and right application time. So for example, uh, we can use uh, these fungicides like metconazole, I really like it, or uh, Carix, one of our, another products. And uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we'll find the ways again. We're finding them all the time. Um, but one more small uh, question. Um, uh, but do you think that they um, that they intend or that they um, accept to invest a little bit more money also in the autumn time? Yes, yes, uh, of course. Uh, you see, we are very different from the region you came from. You came from Germany, and uh, sometimes, uh, and I heard you know that uh, you have uh, some really nice statistics that 50% of applications are not profitable. So what I can tell that. Uh, uh, the measurement of profitability here in Baltics should be evaluated a bit differently uh, because we can lose all the crop if we are not applying growth regulator. The uh, stem elongation won't be avoided. It comes up and the frost, if frost comes, we can lose the uh, whole crop. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, uh, if we can save few euro, because it's not very expensive applications mm -hmm. of growth regulators, we can sometimes we can use whole crop. So it's I think it's one of the most important applications in the whole technology of all seed rate. Okay. So of course insecticides are very important. Fungicides during uh, flowering time are important, but this one is crucial because we can lose whole crop. Mm, okay. Um, um, I have found uh, in, the, in the internet an interesting uh, press release uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Germany from the Agricultural Industry Association. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, mentioned uh, that the pesticide market in Germany uh, dropped down in 2019 for, let me check, 7% yes. uh, on a level now of 1.2 billion euros. Okay. If we look a little bit more deeper in this uh, press release, uh, they mentioned also that, uh, uh, especially for the fungicide market, there is a big drop down of uh, around 13%, now on a new level of 435 million. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, nice to know. But if we go now back to our topic here today, interesting is they mentioned uh, they there is a reduction of 25% of, of fungicides in rapeseed 2019. Okay, um, 
for me, I can explain that. Um, yeah, spring 2019, mainly influenced by drought and temperatures, um, um, dry environment also then uh, in, in the autumn time uh, 2019. So um, there wasn't a bigger uh, growth regulation uh, necessary, so okay. But um, now um, I ask myself, um, when I see this information um, and with that lower intensity, the German rapeseed farmers were able now this year, Harvest 2020, to reach an unexpected high yield of, of 3.7 tons. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and now I ask myself, um, are the fungicides in autumn time overestimated? Uh, and, and, and do we need them? Or do you have some explanations for me for that? Because on one side they, they, they didn't use them and, and, and on the other side they have high yield. Okay, so first of all, what, why we're using fungicides at all? So fungicides and all kinds of pesticides are uh, they, they, they are, let's say, saving uh, the yield, so they are protecting the yield. So there must be potential first to protect something. Mm -hmm. So if you have very homogeneous, homogeneous uh, early planted crops, for example, what happened uh, this year? So on 2019 autumn, we've been able to drill for a long period of time. Most of the crops were drilled early, for example, here in Baltics. So plants developed huge uh, leaves, uh, huge amount of mass, and we stopped them. We had to regulate them in autumn for two times, uh, twice. Some farms uh, uh, did it already three times. So okay. it's there. And uh, these kind of products, they are still uh, expanding the root. Uh, and uh, it is more, let's say, Mm, plants are more resistible, uh, resistant for droughts and all kind of other stuff. So in my opinion, what happened uh, in your scenario, it was uh, very important that, uh, that, that, that uh, we had already very nice start of the season. Afterwards, we got rain in the flowering, what was very important for it. And even in our trial center, AgroConcern has uh, developed our own, we developed our own trial center where we're trying varieties and products. So we noticed that uh, varieties with one fungicide application are performing well, but fungicides still are saving quite a lot of yield potential we are losing if we are not applying. So I would say that it's not overestimated uh, when we're talking about growth regulators in autumn. I'd say not always people are choosing right products there. So, for example, if we are not applying growth regulator and we have very, very mild winter, uh, we won't see any kind of damage there or the damage will be low, considerably low, and the farmers will be satisfied. But sometimes, uh, like it happened in Kona's trial station on 2016-17 season, uh, the replication which was not applied with the uh, growth regulators totally collapsed and died and only some semi dwarfs survived while other conventional varieties uh, died. And all other applications who've been treated with fungicide was uh, fine, was, was great. So in my opinion, it's uh, uh, if the question is about losing the crop here in Baltics where we have winter time and cold winter time usually, I think it's necessary to apply them. And it's not a question of uh, 10 or 15 euro you're willing to invest into the crop. And by the way, another moment I figured out uh, after your question that in Germany, usually fungicide prices are higher. Uh, so just imagine how much uh, you, you can calculate by yourself there. But uh, I think uh, there must be quite a big difference in between of these kind of applications. So if you're doing two applications in autumn time or uh, extra free fungicide application in springtime, it, it makes quite a big uh, amount of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, average price uh, for an autumn application? So for autumn application, for example, some people are using uh, cheapest product in the market. It's, it's like straight tebuconazole, it might be aureus or folicor. Mm -hmm. uh, one liter costs around uh, 11, 12 euro. So registered dose rate is 0.5 mm -hmm. and this 
0.5 is like uh, uh, it's treating only FOMA. So mm -hmm. it's 6 euro mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. not very efficient against uh, mm -hmm. the growth. Okay. Yeah, but uh, another one which is, in my opinion, uh, most competitive here is metconazole. 90 mm -hmm. grams of metconazole costs around 23 uh, for something euro. Mm -hmm. And the uh, dose rate 0.5 brings us to 11 euro investment or 12 euro investment okay. uh, to, to already have a decent uh, growth regulation if we are doing it in 3 4 leaf stage. If we are applying later, we need to increase the dose rate. So we are going for 0.7, 60 grams of metanozole. It costs around 15 euro then 16. Mm -hmm. If we need to force it seriously, we are going to stronger products, which we'll maybe discuss later. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I will I will check that. Will yeah, check please it. check yeah. because it's very important when we are talking about statistics and yeah. so on. Yeah. Because numbers are numbers, but sometimes yeah, yeah, life is right. different. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And during our last winter seminar, we presented um, official figures from long-term analysis uh, mm -hmm. of the Bavarian State uh, Institute of Agriculture. We investigate the uh, fungicide uh, effect on rapeseed yield since uh, 2001. On average, we get uh, the following figures that uh, just 45% of uh, all autumn applications uh, were profitable. Mm -hmm. Uh, in average, uh, if we keep the cost in mind, we get only about uh, 2 euros per hectare. And just in special years, farmers uh, can make profit uh, uh, with uh, such uh, a fungicide application. Uh, we underline here more, more the insurance effect. Uh, can you agree with that? Uh, Mm, what are your experiences in, under Baltic conditions? Uh, and additionally, I would like to ask you uh, for audience, what is necessary uh, for access, su successful grow regulation? So, in my opinion, the first and most important thing to successfully uh, stop the growth of falsehood drip, we should go earlier. So it means that if we can make first application of growth regulator in three or four leaf stage, it's already cheaper. Just immediately it's cheaper. You can uh, go, as I mentioned uh, before, with metconazole. But if you are late, for example, you are coming to the field and it's already six or eight leaves stage and you see that, you know, it's, it's, it's getting late. We need to, we need to do something drastically and so we, we should go for a product like Carix. Uh, we did some research uh, in our trial station, of not, not only there, uh, in Lithuanian Institute of Agriculture, we found out that, uh, that uh, when we're applying early, 3-4 leaf stage, it's uh, almost no kind of difference in efficacy, concerning efficacy, compared to products like Juventus and compared to product like Carix. Mm -hmm. and the price of them is different yeah so that's the first thing how we should save money it's not about you know going all the time with the uh, uh, top ranked products in the market who costs i don't know 30 percent more uh, 25 percent more which can just you know rearrange everything and go with a little bit cheaper ones but uh, i understand that sometimes uh, it rains sometimes uh, it's really windy and we can't go out with our sprayers so I, th I know that, but uh, from our strategical perspective, uh, strategy of the farm, we have always think how to handle everything earlier and try to plan in this way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned it, the right application date. Um, I can agree uh, uh, from my daily contact with my colleagues and uh, with farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, the question regarding the right uh, uh, application date uh, is the most used. Yes. Uh, we know from scientific, uh, respectively industrial uh, publications that uh, 46 leaf stage uh, uh, has the best efficiency. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, we see that often uh, farmers apply too late. Mm -hmm. uh, but based on uh, experiences of our breeders, uh, we know that uh, late applications uh, mean more robust plant, uh, plants and require high dosage. 
Yes. Uh, would you agree with that? Yes, definitely. As I mentioned later, higher doses, more expensive solutions. If we're applying uh, crop protection products or fungicides or growth regulators earlier, uh, we will always have better efficacy. The same as uh, with fungicide and wheat. Usually when we're applying uh, on, let's say, according to plan, uh, and we're not looking into the sky, for example, if, it's wo it, if it will rain, if it won't rain, we can uh, arrange diseases with uh, small amounts of pesticides. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be the ways how we are going to reduce all that these inputs till 2030. So we'll have to make uh, smaller doses, maybe, and uh, do it more repetitively. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. It's, it's uh, quite a long time till that, but we'll figure it out. Um, one small question. Um, yes. Um, you say, OK, um, earlier, uh, more efficiency. Um, I remember we have in we have in Germany this um, I don't know if it's a good uh, a general recommendation, but we say uh, 0.1 liter per leaf mm -hmm. of what uh, of of um, t um, of an ASIL in, in general. So it's not ah. for 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 special products, but uh, they say for with the ASILs uh, uh, 0.1 liter and and then uh, per leaf, and you are on a good way. Interesting for for uh, for the Baltics. Would you agree well, with that? Or I, I, I disagree, <laughs> hardly. Uh, I understand the, the idea, but uh, we should know about what kind of product we are talking about. Let's uh, say because then because the concentration might be very very different. Like uh, you have uh, two nut conazoles in the Europe. Mm -hmm. One is Caramba, which one liter contains 60 grams of nut mm -hmm. and we have a more concentrated one, Juventus, mm -hmm. which has 90 grams. So 50% of the dose of uh, active is mm -hmm. uh, is different. Okay. So, uh, so these kind of uh, uh, ideas are really great when you know uh, the practice, common practice, is used in some kind of region. But we should very carefully speak about it international on international level and where all the manufacturers involved. Let's say Tilmore is another great product and uh, it's, it's, it's registration rate, if I remember right, I, I might be wrong, but it's 0.8 something. So and it's only one dose rate. But uh, you will now if you will use Tilmore on eight leaves, it will do nothing. It contains not enough of tebuconazole to stop it. You should use it in three, four leaf stage, as I mentioned, and then you will get much better efficacy than you might have on eight leaf stage. So I believe that uh, it's uh, it's a tricky stuff, and we shouldn't uh, speak like this because uh, uh, we could uh, uh, mislead some people. That's I, I would say. Check the product. You know it. You know the products. And in my opinion, 45 grams of uh, metconazole is doing quite well in 3-4 leaf stage. If we are going to 4-6 uh, leaf stage, we can go with uh, 63 grams of active or 0.7, let's say. And very the same story with Cadex. Mm -hmm. If we are going for, for first application and it's already 8 leaves and they are robust plants, very massive, we should go with 1 liter and not less. But if we are on three, four, five leaf stage, we can go with 0 0.7, 0 0.9. It depends on density of the crop as well. Mm -hmm. So every single time, agronomist who is on the field is the master key for right decision. Thanks, Anas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think you can uh, uh, agree now with me. It's good to have mm -hmm. an expert uh, for such a discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks a lot, Anas, already for, for your input. Um, Okay, then let's go a little bit further. Um, okay. Now we, we discussed quite a lot about um, products and, and, and uh, ingredients and, and dosage. Um, um, if I'm now a farmer um, and ask you, um, what is your strategy then now for, for autumn uh, uh, 2020 regarding growth regulation? And, uh, and please uh, uh, keep in mind especially that um, uh, not only Rapool has a broad portfolio of moderate growing hybrids and, and vigorous uh, growing hybrids like, yeah, it was Mercedes in the past, yeah. now Phantom, Temptation and, and, and Atora, Dominator, so, so yes. many hybrids. 
and also from from the competition. So, um, what is then your strategy if I would ask you um, uh, today as a farmer uh, for for my field? So first of all, I'd like to ask the owner of the field what kind of uh, density of plants it ha he has right now there. So sometimes it uh, goes from 30 to even 60 or 70 if uh, there are OP OPs, uh, open pollinated varieties. Uh, on the field sometimes it's even 80 or 90 because uh, also drapes coming back again and again to the same fields and sometimes when people are plowing the some old uh, volunteers comes up and sometimes you can find that uh, you drilled 45 or 50 seeds per square meter but you can see 70 80 plants and i had this kind of stuff in my practice so it's the first thing second thing is uh, mm, drilling time when the crop was drilled and how fast it develops. For example, in the last in previous couple of years, we saw many, many fields who've been drilled in, uh, let's say, first week of August. And uh, they are extremely vigorous and very strong plants. And there we immediately needed two applications in most of the cases, not all, but most of the cases. So for first application, I'd strongly recommend to think and to check uh, the product like Juventus, as I mentioned, 0. and if it's drilled early, we should immediately go for 0.7 dose rate, quite a strong one, good one, and uh, you'll be able to see that it works quite well. Uh, after, I don't know, a couple of weeks, I, I believe in the beginning of uh, September, it, it was still growing, and we needed to apply some carex. So if it's less density there, 0.7 is fine. If it's very dense, we should consider 1 liter, 1.2 liter, and uh, it, it works quite well. If uh, we're talking about the fields who were drilled in the middle of the August, let's say it's uh, optimal time, uh, first application, as I mentioned, 0.7, and in most of, the, of Juventus, and in most of the cases, we won't, won't need a second uh, application of, uh, of uh, growth regulator. The only, let's say, mm, I forgot that name, uh, for that word in English, uh, it's not my native speech, tongue speech, but uh, uh, there are some, let's say, questions. If, uh, if you apply the 0.7 of Juventus, and uh, it's 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 uh, still growing. Uh, in most of the cases, it shouldn't. But if it's still growing, 0.7 carex then should do the stuff. But most important thing is density of the crop. If it's too dense, it will extend. You can do everything. It will extend. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when I visited some of the trial fields in Agrovisia a few years ago, and I went to the start of the field and you could see that there's 100 plants in square meter mm -hmm. uh, drilled and uh, there was two growth regulators already applied. Uh, there was, let's say, uh, eight leaf stage of the plants, but they were so, so narrow mm -hmm. and so tall already with mm -hmm. along the uh, stem. So you won't be able to do nothing if it's too dense. Mm -hmm. So the first growth regulator is precise drilling rate and drilling time. I think it's the cheapest ones. And uh, later, all the stuff is coming. And those uh, people who drilled uh, also drip after 24th of August, let's say, I think in most of the cases, well, they will avoid to, they, they won't need to apply any kind of growth regulator. But uh, I have to remind that uh, active ingredient like metconazole, it expands the root mm -hmm. and still crop uh, survives uh, all the stresses in a much better way uh, during the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, even if you are not planning to apply, 0.4 of Juventus might help us just a little bit if crop is growing. Um, that's an interesting point. Um, um, we um, uh, in Rapul we make uh, several uh, technology trials 
to to check out our varieties for for the different purposes and mm -hmm. how we can let's say characterize them in the best way. Um, in in the north of Germany, in in our head office uh, at mm -hmm. NPZ, uh, so that is located to the Baltic Sea. We do such uh, trials also for for different sowing dates and then nitrogen yes. intensities and so on. Um, interesting was uh, this year um, the the we call it um, ultra late sowing trial yes. uh, was sown out by somehow 17 18 of September. Um, it was immediately in in this uh, mentioned dry uh, environment so. Our um, uh, economists decided, okay, this uh, ultra late sowing trial is not necessary to uh, uh, to apply here fungicides. Mm -hmm. yes. um, later on, we got uh, this uh, quite untypical English winter. So we had a lot of uh, moisture and uh, uh, precipitation, mm -hmm. higher warm, temperatures yeah. in, in, in January and, and February. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then uh, we observed a very interesting point. We got FOMA. Yes. We, we, we got FOMA in, in, the, in uh, this uh, uh, trial and, and we could really see then the, the FOMA resistance in the different varieties. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it was for me personally a uh, first time to see this typical falling down of, of the plant. So the, the stem uh, was really... Uh, killed it was uh, rotten and 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 then uh, with uh, this uh, lower nitrogen that's next interesting point uh, we we go uh, in two replications with just 120 kilograms so not really enough for the rapeseed plants in spring somehow to compensate mm -hmm. and to work against the foma so you could really easily see that uh, the differences and and then with the 170 kilogram uh, uh, variant the plants were more able to to compensate here this lack of of the mm -hmm. fungicide in, in autumn time they were a little bit more robust foma was there but not able to to bring Lower them down intensive yeah it was it was there but it was not so hard huh? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, by the way, you touched a really nice topic because for third year already we're doing some kind of trials, field trials. Okay. Uh, and we are working against FOMA. And what we've noticed, yeah, that uh, uh, all these products I've mentioned, uh, Folicur or Orius, um, Metcon, uh, Juventus, also Carix, they are, and Tilmar, they're all working against FOMA. The thing is that we're applying them on pre four leaf stage uh, or to six or to eight leaves, but in this period of time. The FOMA uh, is able to affect plant even if it's minus one. So it's still in the air, mm -hmm. it comes to on the, on the uh, leaves. And that's why in extremely late winter, we could see really severe damages there. So the thing is what we've developed that even if we don't need any more to stop the growth mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, beginning, usually of October, we're going out or maybe even later, we're going when we see first spots of FOMA, we're going out and uh, apply half liter of Oreos or 120 grams of tabuconazole. It's very low dose rate and it doesn't affect the growth of the plant but it uh, keeps leaves healthy. So we noticed that this kind of late applications here in our trials mm -hmm. are giving uh, positive uh, reactions to the plant. So even from this, we could expect uh, this year, we've witness, witnessed uh, plus 4% uh, of yield, which mm -hmm. is not too much, mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely covers the expenses. Mm -hmm. And also if we'll have a winter like previous one, we'll have more uh, of the uh, infestations in extremely uh, sensitive varieties like um, Mercedes, for example, mm -hmm. or, or others. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the latest time for late application? Mm, still, you can. <laughs> well, it, if it's not freezing, <laughs> you mm -hmm. can go out. But uh, uh, you, you should think about it. it only if you can see some spots on the leaves already. Mm -hmm. If it's not, 
you shouldn't uh, just waste waste time or money. So spots on the leaves and uh, just check some fields around because Forma goes uh, for 600 meters easily mm -hmm. by the air. So just okay. be careful there. Okay. Um, so it's not very regular practice in Lithuania mm -hmm. to do so, but we tried. It gives results. We started starting to think about it and how to, 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 to bring it to the field. Okay. Um, one more um, question um, uh, regarding this uh, comparison of, of yeah, um, fungicides and, and growth regulator. We, we know that uh, with this uh, product Carix, uh, it is a little bit difficult. Is it now a fungicide? Is it a, a growth regulation? Um, I, I, today I would like here to bring a little bit this international input uh, to this um, conversation. Um, official long-term analysis uh, from uh, um, our uh, friends in, in Czech Republic, they present a, a yield plus uh, uh, of 13.5% over up to 20 years. Uh, if we compare intensive uh, um, uh, production with, with uh, several fungicide applications versus mm. uh, zero uh, fungicide uh, variant. Um, for me, interesting is they are working without Carux. If we go then to the, um, to the practice uh, in, in Czech Republic, uh, I asked my, my colleagues and they gave me the, the latest figure. Uh, Carux has a, a market share of 45%. Mm -hmm. So it's totally opposite. Um, now, um, question to you, is, is Carux now then a suitable product for such a general growth regulation strategy or is it a, a specialist for, 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 as you mentioned, later mm -hmm. applications, massive production? So, uh, it's, well, <laughs> Carix in Lithuania is also a very popular product. It, it also has uh, quite a big uh, market share here. Uh, the thing is why it's so popular, it, it really works. It mm -hmm. works very well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it works as a fungicide as well. Uh, Carix contains two active ingredients. One of them is metronazole, I mentioned already a bunch of the times before. And another one is um, mepiquat chloride. So mepiquat chloride is uh, suitable for ulcer drip. Uh, and it's uh, different uh, from chloramiquat chloride, which we are using in uh, uh, cereals mm -hmm. or secret cell but uh, here the part of metconazole is very small so basically if you are not uh, going with one liter you shouldn't expect very high uh, efficacy against uh, foma but uh, also from our trials what we've noticed that uh, carix and juventus they both are controlling foma quite well in uh, these dose rates who are let's say quite common for us the czech republic is uh, 1,000 kilometers to the south. I lived there for a while. I studied there, and I checked there some 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 crops as well as uh, as well as also drip. So the thing is that uh, they have much higher average temperature per year, and they need much more control of uh, growth regulators. And if you will ask me, I can't, I don't know now what kind of practice do they have in, in, in Czech Republic, but I would guess that they are not going to the lower dose rates than one liter, and averagely they are going with 1.4, 1.5, something, and they're applying uh, much higher dose rates than we are doing here. Uh, right now, even uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the middle of September, and I can feel how every day is getting shorter and shorter and it changes rapidly mm -hmm. and 1000 kilometers to the south you know day day length uh, i would say it's it's still different but it's more intensive sun is still up there and the hour and sun here is going on the, some kind of angle lower angle and plants are not able to get all this mm -hmm. light they need and they're growing much slower mm -hmm. so I really like Carix. I really like and appreciate this product. It's an, we, we are selling it. It's in our palette. But I can see that in Lithuania, from my perspective, it might be niche. And most, uh, let's say, I don't see the reason why we should use it in such a 
big amounts because it's more expensive and it does the same job if we're applying early. If we're applying late, mm -hmm. it's 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 um, yeah. like this. So I understand these people and I know what they're doing and uh, I, th I know that they are doing the right. Mm -hmm. They're on the right mm -hmm. way. Okay. Um, we um, we started at the beginning of, of our conversation um, um, with the point that yeah we um, we don't see this um, expected uh, yield progress in the in the practice uh, because of, of several reasons like climatic change and and, and, and further factors. Um, at the same time, uh, we also can already see that this new class of, of hybrids is also then here coming now step by step to the mm -hmm. market. We see this new uh, generation of hybrids, um, which are really robust, uh, healthy. Uh, we have these new uh, um, resistances uh, against turnip yellow virus, for example. We have a new FOMA resistances uh, like LMS. Uh, uh, and, and the varieties are becoming now more and more flexible in, in their crop management. Um, temptation is, for example, uh, a good uh, um, uh, example for that. Uh, um, it was uh, the outstanding uh, varieties in the last two years uh, in, in several countries, uh, Poland and, and also Czech Republic, uh, uh, Slovakia. Um, I have uh, found one interesting result, um, Anas. Um, uh, temptation was um, uh, tested in a trial of, of uh, SPZO, that is the Rapeseed uh, Association of, of mm -hmm. Farmers in Czech Republic. They test uh, several varieties together with temptation for um, uh, zero fungicide uh, technology. Um, technology. Mm -hmm. and, and temptation was the only one which reached uh, a, a higher um, 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 yield, uh, more than five tons per hectare mm. without fungicide. It was the only variety in that trial. Um, so it convinced a lot. Uh, that was really a big message uh, for, for us and, 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 and for our experiences. So um, question now coming up uh, in me um, and, and question to you. Um, do these new hybrids, do they need fungicides at all now? Or is it possible yeah, that they can so grow without? Temptation is a great hybrid. We kept an eye on it for a while as well as a distributor. And uh, if I remember right, it has turnip yellow uh, virus, virus resistance. resistance. So uh, just imagine that in South, again, in Czech Republic, they have much more problem with these kind of uh, challenges. And every single time this variety is not suppressed so heavily by this disease, it uh, jumps out all from all the competition. Uh, so it's the first thing why uh, these kind of products are really, really great. They are more safer uh, to grow and it, they give sometimes some surprises. Uh, to be honest, this year we've experienced quite uh, nice yields by ourselves of falsed rape. And uh, in our research center, we found out again uh, that a couple of varieties uh, stood out as well, and they reached five tons of better yield uh, mm -hmm. without any fungicide application. But with fungicide application, they reached six and, and plus. So what I would like to say that uh, it's not like we shouldn't should uh, uh, not to think, but. Uh, I think there is no reason yet to go out from all the fungicide uh, technologies already, uh, but we should think for synergies. For example, if I know that it's raining and it's flowering, why not apply anything against Claritinia? Uh, if uh, in autumn time we drilled early and I see that plants are growing too fast, why not to use fungicide? Mm -hmm. We still can. Mm -hmm. After 2030s, maybe we will have a different kind of technologies. But I'd say that uh, genetics uh, are really advancing, but uh, crop protection business doing it on the same way. So biopesticides will appear. Uh, many, many changes are uh, awaits us. And I would suggest to look for synergies to keep 
that in mind that variety and crop protection product like fungicide is only a tool to reach better results in our business. Mm -hmm. So we need to grow we, and we are growing uh, together with, uh, we, we're doing it by ourselves. We, 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 are, we, we have some land here in Lithuania and we are doing agriculture. So all the time we are thinking how to uh, boost the plant, how to boost the variety and how to help it to overcome the challenges which are presented by the nature. So mm -hmm. let's look for synergies, I would say like this. Okay, guys, uh, we are already deep in discussions about crow regulations in rapeseed and mainly for optimal time. But unfortunately, based on, on, on the late, late harvest time in 2020, we have a different situation and we have now a uh, high share of late sowing rapeseed. Arnas, what are uh, your uh, recommendations for such farmers? Uh, who sold mm. late, yeah? Yes, who sold late. So I believe uh, I really enjoyed uh, watching uh, your podcast. Before, when you invited me, I wished to Thanks. look through uh, what kind of production you, you made there. And it was really nice podcast about uh, late drilled uh, plants. And I can't add more, to be honest. Uh, you mentioned all the most important things there. So uh, just uh, we, we can think about more nitrogen about uh, denser crop, uh, about uh, also you should choose variety, as you mentioned, MSL hybrids, MSL type of hybrids must be drilled uh, denser than Tsugura hybrids. Also, um, you, can, uh, you can add up uh, some kind of extra fertilization through leaves where amino acids and phosph uh, phosphorus, some potassium might be involved. Uh, check all the time check for the pests because every single time pests are involved into the crop it slows down and dam damages the plant and it slows down it a little bit because it has to compensate uh, what else i don't i don't really know but uh, just you guys just check their previous podcast it, it's it's really good and uh, everything is mentioned there i suppose thanks anas yeah, ladies and gentlemen, um, time is running. Uh, we, we already discussed quite a lot of uh, um, questions about fungicides and the position of fungicides in, uh, in a successful uh, crop management. Um, I would like to, to summarize uh, our discussion here today. Um, so, um, Viginta mentioned uh, we have a um, quite a broad uh, picture outside in the field uh, with different uh, developed uh, uh, plants. Uh, so, we have some inhomogeneous uh, um, uh, situation outside. Um, um, we have heard from Anas that the uh, most important point is now to, yeah, to select a customized uh, strategy for, for each field and not to go in uh, with such a general strategy like we did it in the past. Um, um, we want to uh, underline again um, that rapeseed has still a very high um, um, profit potential and, and um, so uh, we, we would like to, to underline here as well that, uh, that you can go ahead with a little higher intensity because based on that we have heard from Anas, uh, we are able then also to, to create uh, a better base for, for harvest 2021. Um, fungicide applications, uh, that is also the other side of the metal, they show uh, a different picture regarding yield effect. Uh, we have heard that uh, there are different situations between different countries. Um, we have to take in mind uh, the situation, uh, the regional situation. Uh, and how important is the insurance effect of, of fungicide? This has, that has to be answered by each farmer themselves. So uh, uh, finally, at the end, uh, uh, it is a decision by, by you. Um, a successful growth regulation, we have heard, requires uh, a customized strategy 
depending on local conditions and 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 yeah, Anus, you mentioned that uh, it depends also on the use variety. Um, um, we have heard a lot about uh, Juventus and, and Carrix as, as um, um, suitable products for for um, uh, for uh, um, the cross regulation and, and fungicide strategy in autumn. Uh, yeah, okay, it was quite a lot of uh, advertisement for BSF, uh, so uh, I think <laughs> there are also further um, uh, uh, possibilities available. Uh, um, yeah, I think here also on, on uh, uh, Folicure uh, as uh, probably a little bit more cheaper product, but also I know uh, good uh, efficiency from Tilmore. We spoke a little yeah. bit about uh, Toprex uh, before our podcast, but yeah, it uh, doesn't have registration. Exactly, he has a little bit different situation. It is a, a, a also a used uh, product in, in in Germany, I know. Yeah, and uh, from our side, uh, we have to to underline. Okay, um, the um, the yield and, and breeding progress is running. Uh, we see that with the new uh, uh, hybrids, like uh, mentioned, uh, we discussed the uh, temptation. Uh, dominator, but also there is a um, dynamic in the market uh, with these new uh, uh, resistances, turnip yellow virus, and they deliver uh, a broad uh, package of, uh, of resistances. So we mentioned turnip yellow virus, they have uh, FOMA resistance, uh, they have, uh, uh, some of them have uh, this pot shattering resistance, so they give uh, a lot of more flexibility. Um, to, to the crop management, but uh, they require also here some adaptation in the fungicide strategy, which we also discussed here today. Um, and yeah, uh, we developed uh, rapeseed um, based on these uh, later sowing dates and some problems with uh, lack of moisture. Yeah, um, they need a special adapted fungicide strategy, um, maybe a little bit higher focus on, on, on fungicides and not on, on growth regulation products uh, and um, here um, again uh, we we have to underline uh, even if it is looking that the plants maybe can manage it without please keep my example in mind from uh, the north of Germany uh, we decided okay small plants late in the year we can go without and then later on, based on this English winter, we had then FOMA in, in early springtime. So um, take that uh, in your um, uh, consideration for, for your uh, fungicide strategy 2020. Yeah, I think uh, we can close here the, the podcast, uh, our third podcast here for today. Um, finally, I would like to say thank you to you, Anas, uh, for your participation, for your input uh, and, and for sharing your experiences with us and our audience. Thank you also to you, uh, Viginta, that you support us with uh, an overview about the uh, situation outside in the field. It was a pleasure to speak with you here today and uh, about uh, plus and minus of, of fungicides and, and the right strategy for 2021. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, you uh, benefit a little bit from our discussion here and maybe we delivered some information so that you can make some small adjustments to your fungicide strategy for the uh, next uh, weeks. We um, wish you all the best for a successful uh, establishment um, till Christmas. Um, wish you all the best for your rapeseed and for a good uh, base then for harvest 2021. And um, yeah, and if you have any further questions, um, of course you can go to some experts uh, like like Arnas and and Aku Concerners. You can also contact us uh, uh, and uh, our salespeople for further advices uh, because you know already we know the rapeseed. Any further comments from your side? I think that we told everything that was very interesting for farmers and thank you guys for your opinion. So I know only one that uh, when you're talking about things uh, we are passionate about and we are you are about uh, genetics, we are about genetics and uh, everything else. 
uh, we can speak over, over, over and over. And it's, it's, it was a really great hour for me. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, you know the rapeseed. Thank you very much, Anna. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, stay with us. We're looking forward to see you next time. Uh, your Raps assistant. <laughs>